Thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate it. And I really want to appreciate you all having me out here today. Uh, it's very important that we talk about Northeast State and the aviation program, and how's, how it began, where we are, and where we're going. The, uh, the one thing I want to talk about first before we get started was that I had put on here too how the program actually began back in 2015. It all began because Hank Summers actually visited with me at, uh, at Bell Helicopter. We were talking about we could not find skilled mechanics or skilled, any kind of skilled knowledge in aviation and in our area. So how can we fix that? Well, one thing led to another. We started having a discussion with Northeast State Community College and now this is where we are here today. After five grants and two million dollars worth investment, this is, what, this is where we are. So let's talk about a little bit, what is a airframe and power plant mechanic? Well, all aircraft in the United States has an end registration number. It's registered within the United States. That aircraft can fly anywhere in the world. To work on an aircraft though, you have to have an FAA airframe and power plant license. So when, they leave, when our students leave our program, they can work on any aircraft that's U.S. registered anywhere in the world. The uh, program is broken down into three areas. Uh, we, to work with the FAA, uh, had to create the entire curriculum. We had to create 48 separate courses, uh, three operation manuals, and all that had to go to the FAA for approval. And after several uh, back and forth with the FAA uh, to get our program manuals, our equipment, and so on ready, we were certified in airframe January of last year. We were certified in power plant this year at January the 14th. So we are fully certified as an FAA uh, technical school. The other things we included too now though is the, uh, a big part of the problem that we see, and sometimes the soft skill development is more challenging than the technical part of it. So we incorporated, coming up this year, human factors, risk management, quality control systems, and all those kind of things into soft skill development. <coughs> That's some things too that our technicians sometimes they lack the soft skills uh, in organization and those kind of things and help to help with that program. All of my students have to wear a uniform from day one and two they have to clock in and clock out of class and it's so structured that if a student misses an hour they have to make that hour back up. That's not a given. Uh, calling in sick, being late because the dog gets paper, all that kind of stuff doesn't work. So. They have to make that time up. This is what the program looks like. The entire program is six semesters. The first semester is that they'll go ahead and complete their general academics for the associate's degree, which is six courses. Humanities, uh, English Comp 1, Math 10, 10, and so on. And then, if they don't complete that, they can't start the program. But once they complete the general academics, they start the program with me in January. That goes to the general fundamentals. And that will last through one semester, and right now in the uh, summer semester and the fall semester, they'll pick up the airframe one and two. And then the following January, same thing here, uh, for two semesters, they go through power plant one and power plant two. Upon completion of that, they have to get uh, with the FAA, and right now the closest we can get our examination is Nashville. So our students have to drive to Nashville and, and go through an oral examination and also a practical examination. This is really tough. I mean, I have a master's in aeronautics and that was a piece of cake compared to these tests they have to go through. Because that they have to go through an oral examination that you'll sit down in front of an examiner and they will ask you 120 questions, rapid fire questions, and if you miss one in a certain area, or you miss two, it's terminated, you have to go back home, restudy, get retrained, I have to sign them off again, and they have to go back and take the examination over. Usually in 120 questions, when I took my exam, uh, I went through 120 questions in 20 minutes. So that's how fast it is. Then as soon as you complete with that, he says, okay, you pass, he'll shake your hand or she'll shake your hand. And then they'll hand you a multimeter and say, by the way, the pilot reports that the landing gear is stuck down and won't retract. Go troubleshoot it. When you find the problem, come back and get me. So then you have to go through that process. When you find that, they'll give you something else, something else, something else. Normally it'll take four to six hours just to the oral and practical examinations. That's not counting the initial written examination that they have to take at an FAA testing center. 
So this is nothing easy. It's tough. But uh, all my students who started last year already have four airframe certified mechanics. And within two days of them getting their license, they've already been offered at least two jobs by different airlines. So that's what kind of demand we're faced with. Currently right now I have uh, two classes. I have two cohorts going at the same time. I have the uh, first class, I have 22 students. That was a little bit too, too much to handle, especially in a lab environment because of all the practical pro projects we have to go through. So we, I minimized that this year and only brought on 16 students. Now currently, while on the books in the program, I am booked up now until 2025. But for those students who have already completed their associate's degree or have getting ready to complete their associate's they can go to the top of the list. So right now we're booked up that tight. This is some of the things that we've accomplished at Northeast State. We're the only community college in the state with an FAA airframe and power plant certification process program. Also we're the only college in the state with an avionics program. Now I'll explain the difference between A&P and avionics. An airframe and power plant mechanic can work on any part of the aircraft, any aircraft, helicopter, drone, fixed wing, it doesn't matter. But they cannot take the instrumentation out of the, uh, out of the instrumentation panel, out of the cockpit, open those instruments up, work on them, and put them back in. An A and P mechanic can take them out and put them back in, but they are not allowed to work on the internals. But an avionics technician can. So once all these people go through our program and go through the avionics program, there's not one part on the aircraft that they're not qualified to work, work on. So that's really going to open the door for them. Also, too, I don't know if you know it, but we're the only college in the United States that can get an associate's degree and an FA certified airframe power plant at no cost because of Tennessee Promise. The only one in the country. Right now, I have an uh, individual called me yesterday from San Diego. He wants to come to our school, and so we're working the details on that. I have one student from Alaska, and one came from Washington State. So now they come from all over the country. To give you an idea of the demand of, of mechanics and pilots right now, though, we're so short, approximately, you can see right here by the country, altogether we're about, in the United States alone in North America, we're 430,000 mechanics and pilots short. And it's going to be that way for the next 20 years. So right now, all of my students, I had a, in fact, I, I'll go ahead, well, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but this is what it looks like worldwide. Congress has identified mechanics, pilots and mechanics as a critical shortage for the United States. And they're trying now to figure out what can we do to get kids interested in becoming a pilot or a mechanic. Now, used to, pilots and mechanics didn't make a whole lot starting out. But now, that's changed. That has really changed in the past three years. Again, this is the uh, shortage worldwide forecast. This is North America, 420,000 total. This is all including mechanics, pilots, and flight crew members. Technicians, 132,000 short. Right now, every airline is faced with canceling flights every day because there's no mechanics or pilots to fly the aircraft. That's happening daily. I brought this airline in to, uh, to our facility last month. Uh, there's several more airlines coming in, Delta, Honda, Cirrus, and so on. The, uh, when they came in the door, this is what they were offering. We will start you out at $26 an hour. We'll give you a $15,000 sign-on bonus, a $5,000 toolbox with tools, $2,500 additional sign-on, and then they would give you airline tickets, see where you want to go, as much as you want to go. So this is the first one that came to us, and they were begging for them to go ahead and get signed up. They're looking to sign up technicians a year before they get their certificate. So that's how, that's how bad it is right now in the United States alone. The uh, other programs we've got in development, like I said, we're talking about the avionics program that will begin this fall semester. It's a certificate program. It's uh, two semesters. And that's in, in addition to 
the airframe power plant mechanic. That's not part of that program. This is just something in addition to that they can go ahead and add additional credibility to their program. So would that be standalone? Could people just get the avionics? Yes, ma'am, they can. Uh -huh. and, and that's a good question, too, because what we do with the avionics program, we have a lot of people at Wysong and Bell Helicopter and other aviation agencies that would like to get that certification. So we're going to hold the avionics program at night so they have that opportunity. To give you an idea too where our hangar is located, we're located on the south side of the airport. Here's the main terminal area. This is runway 9 and 27. We have three hangars here. This is Alpha. This is the, uh, used to be a coal company. I think, I uh, can't think of the name of it right now, but this is our hangar right here. Is it, no, it's not Westmoreland. Uh, this is Alpha here. Yep. This is a, uh, another facility, another coal company. Uh, I can't think of their name now, but uh, they have a couple of private jets. They have a G, uh, G450 Gulfstream and so on. But everyone, I'd like to welcome you out at any time to come out to our hangar, though, and tour the hangar so I can show you what we're doing there. See, I think a lot of people don't realize about Northeast Tennessee. I mean, I, uh, you know, I came from Linview High School, and when I was going to school, we didn't, didn't really get a lot of guidance. And uh, unfortunately, so when I, after I graduated from high school, I went to work at the Kingsport Press for a few years. Then I went to the Air Force. So that was probably the best thing I could have done. I mean, I, I really loved the military. I still miss it today. But now we have the opportunity for our young people here in this area to go to this program at no cost to them because of Tennessee Promise, walk out the door with their job picks, and now they're guaranteeing that in your second year as a mechanic, you'll make at least a minimum of 80,000, the second year. And now, see, there's such a huge gap. The reason for this is that people my age are retiring. And between my age and people starting out, there's nothing in between. Those gaps are empty right now. So the ones that started in this aviation program as pilots or as mechanics is going to move up very quickly. And there are going to be a, a lot of options to offshoot into quality control, uh, non-destructive testing, NDT, all those kind of things too. Now that they're going to have all kinds of options for them. So I say a person going in today, you're probably going to be turning a wrench for two years before you go into management. I say two years at the most before you go into quality control. But yeah, there's most companies out today too, I said this is $26 an hour, but there's companies out there offering 40 to $42 an hour starting out. The only problem with this is they have to relocate because right now we just cannot support, our companies locally cannot support that kind of uh, graduation numbers. But I think in the future, looking at Aerospace Park, we have a prime opportunity here, but we don't know how long it's going to take to get something in there. But our students can go anywhere in the United States and work right now. Now, the southeastern United States is an aviation hub. All the major aerospace corporations are in the southeast. In this, in our area, we have Cirrus Aircraft in Knoxville, Honda Jet in Greensboro, uh, Gulfstream in Savannah, Boeing in Charleston, Textron Aviation in Charleston, Airbus in Mississippi, Alabama. So we have them all in this close by, but just nothing in our immediate area. So I'm hoping, and this is what I'm telling my students, go out there, get a good job, get some education and knowledge, then when the aerospace park comes alive, come back here. And I think they will if that opportunity comes up. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, what is your graduation percentage rate? 100%. Amazing. 100%. Because the reason that I, I feel, I go through these kids quite a bit with, I meet with them at least four or five times before they come to class for the first day. Through Zoom meetings and open houses and things like that. And I usually sit down with them and their parents or their spouse and talk about aviation. And let them know right up front that when you graduate from this, it's, if you can commit to two years, you'll have a good career. But you have to commit for two years. And with that, I said, you have to understand, you can't just call in sick, and I'm late because whatever. Because every minute you miss, 
you have to make that up or you're not going, you're not going to pass the first course. You don't pass the first course, you're out. So fortunately, that's not happened yet. So you're, you're graduating now about 15 years? It's going to be right around 20, 25. Till 2025. But now that's for students, uh, it's on my waiting list. I have 56 right now on my waiting list. Now, those who don't complete their general academics are not going to be considered. Those who come to me that's completed their general academics, or maybe they like one or two courses, they'll go to the top of the list, and they'll be chosen. Even if they come to me tomorrow, if they have their general academics completed or they're going to complete them on time, they'll go to the top of the list. That's okay. Now, automotive mechanics, those kids who have been working on cars and changing oil, they make the best mechanics. They're the easiest to get through the class. But I have a lot of people, honestly, I had them in class the other day, half the class couldn't tell me the difference between a common screwdriver and a cross point screwdriver. Mm -hmm. So we're starting at the bottom. Okay. You know, we're developing that aptitude. You know, and it just takes time. You know, if they're willing to give the time, we can teach it to them. But that's why I've talked to them and said, you have to commit to this program. Uh, my kids, I uh, call them my kids, my students come in at 8 o'clock in the morning. They're there until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They have a 10-minute break each hour, and they have a 30-minute lunch. The rest of the time, we're in the classroom or the lab. And we put in 30 classroom hours a week. And for the uh, general portion, we'll put in 450 hours for that one semester. And then for power plants, well, for airframe one and two, uh, we put in 546 hours. I'll take it back. Put in 935 hours at each for airframe and power plants. So when they leave, they have to have a minimum of 1,900 hours in the classroom. Yes, sir. How many instructors do you have? Two. And we're tired. <laughs> yes, sir. Richard, what you described for this program, there are other uh, community colleges or whatever in the state of Tennessee. Do they have the same kind of requirements that you do as far as you got to show up and on time and make up and all that? Is that standard or is that something you do? It, well, it's, I can't really speak to all the schools. I just know that uh, the designated mechanic examiner who has examined my students, they said that they're better than the ones coming out of MTSU. So that's all I can say. That's, that's what I was told by the, the designated mechanic examiner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you have or have you had uh, females? Yes, ma'am, I do. I do. I have, uh, I have one female in each class now, and one, of, one girl in my class, my second class, which we just started in January, she already has her pilot's license. In fact, I have eight of my students have gone and gotten their pilot's license since uh, joining the mechanics program. Because a mechanic makes a better pilot, and a pilot makes a better mechanic. And that's what we try to inspire in. But yes, I do. And I have another girl, too, starting uh, next year, next January. No, I'm sorry, I have two more starting next January. Yes, sir. Have you been approached by the U.S. Air Force to try to somehow recruit your grads? No. They've been there. They've talked with me. And, and things like that, but uh, they haven't, because of COVID, we, they really haven't been involved that much. I mean, I know most of them in the local area, uh, but uh, I think that's a good opportunity. I did have one went to the Air Force, but that's before the A&P program began. That's when we still had the Aviation Technology Program. Anyone else? Yes, sir. But well, we spent, uh, uh, that's a good thing too. I mean, if you come out to the hangar, I can show you everything firsthand, but we have a uh, 1980 Sundowner, Beechcraft Sundowner. We have a Mooney uh, A20, and then a Robinson, a, uh, Robinson R22 helicopter. Uh, we also have eight normal reciprocating O320 lock homing engines for the power plant course. Uh, we have four PT6 Pratt & Whitney turbine engines. 
Uh, we have a $120,000 flight simulator. Uh, and also not counting all we have in trainers, we have to, have, we have to train cabin pressurization, pneumatic systems, fire mitigation, uh, instrumentation, electrical systems. So we have trainers for all of those already set up. Yes, sir. Well, so what we do, we train in both those areas. But when you go out, when an AP mechanic goes and leaves us and goes to another company for the first job, that, that company may be, they may have a certain model and platform of helicopter. It may be a Bell helicopter, or it could be a Gulfstream. So what we do, they have the basic skill sets. They've been certified by the, the FAA. They have their airframe and power plant certificate, which is good forever. But when they go to that first company, that company may say, well, I want you to go learn about Pratt & Whitney PT6A engines. So I'm going to send you to Pratt School. So then they'll send them off to that particular school. Oh, the company may have something in how they, they train with. But with an a and is recognized throughout the entire world. It really is. So when they leave us, they can get a job anywhere. But when they get to that, that particular place, they will train them on a particular platform. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Yeah, we have, uh, we have the PT6s is a jet engine. It's a turbo shaft jet engine. And we have four of those that we use for training. But one thing I do want to say though before closing, really, I, I honestly, you have to think about what our kids can do here locally. Those who are not going out and specialize in a college environment and a specialty. Mm -hmm. Those who are kind of left out there in the dark who don't have a path. This is a great path. This is actually a career. This is not just a $15 job. This is getting into a company that you have the skill sets to continue to grow and have various pathways throughout your entire career. So $80,000 on year two is pretty good money. I mean, that's a livable wage. But now, I know people now who start out as AMPs and they're making well past two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars easy. Uh, that's the designated airworthy representatives and designated engineering representatives and so on. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you advertise these schools, or do you? Well, I'll be honest with you. I did all the advertising for this program since it began. I have a helicopter. I found a helicopter museum. I got White Song Aviation. They pitched in and painted it for me. I refurb the interior. We take it to all the different events, parades, high schools, gray schools. When we have the time, we go out and we start, that's the way we communicate and market. And now, that's a good question though, because in the future, at our hangar at Tri-City Airport, what we're gonna do is that we will have a, once a month, an open house at the hangar. So everybody can come in. If they have a child who'd like to get interested in aviation, or maybe a parent who just wants to expose a child to aviation, bring them on out. We'll show them in the helicopter. We'll talk about aviation careers and get them interested, get that fire started. I took my first airplane ride at six years old, and I fell in love with flying at that moment. Yes, sir. It would, I agree with that too. And the uh, junior ROTC, hopefully a lot of those are heading towards the military careers. You know, like going to college and completing that. But those who are not, yes. Yes. But yeah, that's a good point though. I'll be glad, to, yeah. In fact, we probably should have just a, a day, probably in the, in the main auditorium at, uh, at the campus and just have all the junior ROTC cadets come in and just have one mass briefing. Yes, sir. You doing much with battery powered engines? Not yet, but that's the future. It's coming. I mean, the two things that we can definitely count on is battery power and autonomous flight. And that's the two that's gonna happen. Uh, you can see in our cars today, every step, every option we get, every newer car, we have another option that's gonna get us closer and closer to being fully autonomous. 
And right now, our aircraft, we have the capability today to generate and build autonomous aircraft, but people are not ready to accept climbing into an aircraft without a pilot. But you know, 92% of all aviation accidents is pilot error. So you take it out of the equation, 